Although President Trump was aware of the ongoing riot, he did not take any immediate action to address the lawlessness. Instead, at 203, he called Rudy Giuliani again, and that call lasted for over eight minutes. Moments later at 213, rioters broke into the Capitol itself. One of the Proud Boys charged with seditious conspiracy, Dominic Pozzola, used an officer's shield to smash a window and rioters flooded into the building. <laughs> As rioters were entering the building, the Secret Service held Vice President Pence in his office right off the Senate chamber for 13 minutes as they worked to clear a safe path to a secure location. Now listen to some of that radio traffic and see what they were seeing as the protesters got just feet away from where the Vice President was holding. Hold! Hold! They can't the building! Hold! On the door up. We're moving. We need to move now. Copy. If we lose uh, any more time, we may have we may lose the ability to to leave. So if we're going to leave, we need to do it now. They've gained access to the second floor, and I've got public about five feet from me down here below. Okay, copy. They are on the second floor, moving in now. We may want to consider getting out and leaving now. Copy. Will we encounter the people once we make our way? Repeat. Counter any individuals if we made our way to the to the. There's six officers between us and the people that are five to ten feet away from me. Stand by, I'm going down to evaluate. Go ahead. We have a clear shot if we move quickly. We got smoke downstairs. Step by unknown smoke. Step downstairs by the protesters. Is is that route compromised? We have this insecure. However, we will bypass some protesters that are being contained. There is smoke, unknown what kind of smoke it is. Copy. Clear, we're coming out now, all right? Make a way. The President's National Security Council staff was listening to these developments and tracking them in real time. On the screen, you can see excerpts from the chat logs among the national among the President's National, Council, National Security Council staff. At 2.13, the staff learned that the rioters were kicking in the windows at the Capitol. Three minutes later, the staff said the Vice President was being pulled, which meant agents evacuated him from the Senate floor. At 2.24, the staff noted that the Secret Service agents at the Capitol did not, quote, sound good right now. Earlier, you heard from a security professional who had been working in the White House complex on January 6, with access to relevant information and a responsibility to report to national security officials. We asked this person, what was meant by the comment that the Secret Service agents did not, quote, sound good right now? In the following clip of that testimony, which has been modified to protect the individual's identity, the professional discusses what they heard from listening to the incoming radio traffic that day. Okay, that last entry in this page of service, the capital does not sound good right now. Correct. What does that mean? Uh, the members of the BPD tell at this time were starting to fear for their own lives. Um, there were a lot of, there was a lot of yelling, um, a lot of, um, uh, a lot of very personal, to calls um, over the radio, so uh, it was disturbing. I don't I'm like talking about it, but um, uh, there were calls to um, say goodbye to family members, so on and so forth. It was getting, for, for whatever the reason was on the ground, the VPT tell thought that this was about to get very ugly. 
And, do and did you hear that over the radio? Okay. What was the response by the agents who, Secret Service agents who were there? Everybody kept saying, you know, at that point it was just reassurances or, or um, I, I think there were discussions of reinforcements coming, but at, at, again, it, it was just chaos. It was, it was just yelling. And obviously you conveyed this so disturbing, but what, what prompted you to put it into an entry? As it states there, service to the council. They're running out of options and they're getting nervous. It, it, it sounds like we're, that we came very close to either service having to use legal options or, or worse. Like I, I, at that point, I don't know. Is the VP compromised? Is the detail kind of, like, I, I don't know. Like we didn't have visibility, but it doesn't, if they're screaming and, and saying things like say goodbye to the family, like the floor needs to know this is going to on a whole nother level soon. As this next video shows, the rioters' anger was fo focused primarily on Vice President Mike Pence. This woman comes up to the side of us and she says, Pence folded. So it was kind of like, okay, well, in my mind, I was thinking, well, that's it, you know? Well, my son in law looks at me and he says, I want to go in. What percentage of the crowd is going to the Capitol? 100%. It is spread like wildfire that Pence has betrayed us and everybody is marching on the Capitol, all million of us. It's insane. Did people appear angry as you were walking to the Capitol? Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people seem like they're very upset. Tell us some of the things they were saying, if you recall. Oh, there was, they were saying all types, you know, people were screaming all types of stuff. Um, they were mad that uh, uh, Vice President Pence was going to accept the electorals. I mean, it was, I mean, it was a little, you could, if you could think it up, that's, you were hearing it. I believe that, uh, Vice President Pence was going to certify the electoral votes and, or not certify them, but I guess that's just changed, correct? And uh, it's a very big disappointment. I think there's several hundred thousand people here that are very disappointed. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Get more great ABC7 content by clicking the subscribe button for our YouTube channel and download the ABC7 Los Angeles streaming app on Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV, and Roku to watch on your TV.